Okay, um, section 2.2 in Math 196. This is our seventh video. Uh, this is moving graphs around. So in section 2.1, we define what a function is, and we want to now be able to talk about how to build new functions from old functions. To be able to do that, we need to know some old functions. So we need to know a collection of standard functions. This one is the parabola. That's y equals x squared is this parabola. This that's what it looks like. One important thing to note about the parabola is that the domain oops, is all x. There's no, if you remember from 2.1, um, domain is all x unless there's a fraction or a square root or a logarithm. x squared has no fraction, no square root, no logarithm, and so the domain is all x. Um, range y greater than or equal to 0. Right. So what is the range and how do you tell what the range is from the graph? Well when you're looking at a graph the range is the y values that correspond to points on the graph. So point 2 is in the range because there's an x value right, that you can start at and get to 2. Right. So this is the bottom of the graph y equals 0 the graph, all the y values greater than or equal to 0, those are in the range. So is y greater than or equal to 0. So, oh, two other points to notice about y equals square root of x. This, about y equals x squared, that is the vertex. In this particular case, it's 0, 0. If I go one unit for the, from the vertex and one unit up, I get to the point one one. If I go one unit left and then one unit up from the vertex, I get to the point minus one one. When we move the gra graphs around, where these points go will help us determine whether or not the graph has been scaled. So that's y, y equals x squared. Domain is all x. Range is y equal greater than or equal to zero. Vertex is zero zero, and it's got these three points one one minus one one and zero zero, sort of arranged like this at the bottom of the graph. Okay, our second basic graph is y equals square root of x. Domain, like we said before, x greater than or equal to zero, range y greater than or equal to zero. So the domain is all the x's underneath the graph. Right. Domain is always on the x-axis, so from 0 up to 4 points out here. If you go up and down from a negative number, you'll never hit the graph because the graph is always over here. Likewise, for the range, the bottom of the graph is at 0. And it moves up. Okay, so range is y greater than or equal to 0. That's where the graph is as it goes up. Domain is all the x's underneath the graph. Okay, and another nice thing about square root of x is like square root, uh, like x squared, it's got two special points. Zero, zero here is sort of where it ends, right? It comes in and then it just stops. And then if you go one unit right, one unit up, you get to the point one comma one, right? Similar arrangement here, right? One unit right, one unit up. And again, that'll come in useful when we're scaling graphs around. So that's y equals square root of x. And the third graph that you have to be able to recognize is this one. This is y equals absolute value of x. Domain, all x, range, y greater than or equal to 0. Again, no matter what x you put in, if you go up, you'll hit the graph somewhere. On the other hand, the bottom of the graph is at 0. So y greater than or equal to 0, those are the y values that are left to right of the graph. Negative values, even though the, you know, I didn't include any of the negative part, those numbers are not in the range. Okay, and like the other two graphs, there's this nice troika of points. One unit right, one unit up, gets you back to the graph on 1, 1. 
one unit left, one unit up from this vertex gets you back to the graph at minus one. one. Okay, so these are three basic functions. Right? Y equals x squared, y equals square root of x, y equals absolute value of x. So what we want to do is move them around, and if we move them around, how does the formula change? Or if we change the formula a little bit, how does that change what the graph looks like? Okay. So moving graphs around, section 2.2, .2, problems 9 through 12, 17 through 20. We'll consider four ways to manipulate graphs and formulas. You can move them up and down, left and right, flipping, which is also called reflecting it over the x-axis, and scaling. Those are the four things we can do. We can do all four of them. We can do three of them, two of them, whatever. So here's a graph. Um, this is some function y equals f of x. You know, I don't know. I think the function actually is x cubed minus x, but whatever. What I'm interested in is when I move the graph around, right, move it up or down, left or right, flip it or reflect it, um, what happens to the graph? So um, what we'll need for this is, back to black, a little table. And we can pick some particularly nice points here. X is minus 1.5, minus 1, 0, 1, 1.5. What's the corresponding Y? How do you read a graph? Well, if we start at X equals minus 1.5, that's here. And we go down to the graph and over to the Y axis, what do we get? Y is about minus 2. If we start at minus 1, well, we're already on the graph. So y equals 0. That's one of the x-intercepts. 0 is another x-intercept. 1 is another x-intercept. And if we start at 1.5 and ask what's the corresponding y value, we can go up. We hit the graph at 2. And we go over. Oh, y equals 2. And so again, if you know what x is, you can also find y by going up to the graph and over. So here are some points. And here's a picture of the graph. So what happens to these points as we move around the graph? as we move the graph around. Okay, so, so example one, moving the graph up and down a little bit. So this is our original graph. The red graph, right, we've moved it up two units. Right? We went from zero up to two, zero up to two, zero up to two, Remember when we were at minus 1.5, we're down at minus 2, and now we're up at 0. When we're at 1.5, we're at uh, 2, and now we're up to 4. So the red graph is f of x plus 2. The blue graph right, has been moved down 3 units each place. Right, we start at 0 there, we're down at minus 3, down minus 3, down minus 3, 1, 2, 3, down minus 3. So this is y equals f of x minus 3. Okay, so what do we have here? Oop, I miswrote that. f of x minus 3. So what do we have here? Adding or subtracting outside the function. So we have f of x, the formula, whatever that is, and now we're going to subtract 3 from everything, or we take the formula and add 2 to everything. That moves the graph up or down. And up is positive down is negative. Okay. So, why did that happen? Well, what are we doing? We'll start with our little table. We had x's, and then whatever the function was, right, if we take the number as minus 1.5, Minus 1, 0, 1, 1.5. And we run them through the function. What did we find? Minus 2, 0, 0, 0, and plus 2. So if we set y equal to 
f of x, say, plus 2, right? So we're looking for the red graph. What do we get? Well, this is f of x. We just add 2 to it. So we get 0, 2, 2, 2, and then 4. And so if we take these x's and pair them with these y's, you don't get the black graph here, but you get this red graph. Right? So minus 1.5 with 0, and minus 1 with 2, at 0 with 2, at uh, 1, x equals 1, y, so at 2. So what we're doing then is, is we take x, we run it through the function, see what number we get, and then we add um, 2 to that. And so the effect is to move all y values up by 2, which means you just take the whole graph and you just move it up by 2 units everywhere along here. Okay, and the same thing would be for the minus 3. Okay, so moving up or down, adding or subtracting outside of the function moves the graph up, that's positive, or down, that would be my negative. Okay, what about moving a graph left or right? This is a little trickier. So there's our standard function, whatever that was. That's the black graph, y equals f of x. Here's the red graph that's been moved to the right. And here's a blue graph that's also been moved to the left. So what's going on here? Well, according to the caption I've dev down here, moving it to the right means that we get y equals f of uh, x minus 2. Don't know why that keeps happening. Um, and <clears throat> if we look at this blue graph, according to my caption there, this is y equals f of x plus 3. So, to move a graph to the right, I subtracted 2 inside the function. To move the graph to the left, I added 3 inside the function. So, what the heck is going on there? Well, we'll set up our little table and see what we're doing here. <clears throat> so, again, if we look at this red graph, we start with... Um, x and the y values right. minus 1.5 I want to give myself a little space here because something will happen that's a little tricky so minus 1.5 minus 1 0 1 1.5 minus 2 0 0 0 2 so that's the function that we get the table that we get for this black function that's y equals f of x if we put in x equals minus 1.5, right, that's about here, we get out minus 2 for y, x equals minus 1, we get 0, etc., etc. Okay, what about the red function? Well, when x is 2, that corresponds to plugging in x equals 0. We get a y value, the same y value at x equals 2 on the red function as we do for 0 on the original function. So, what are the actual x's that we want? Oops, I want the thinner red pen. There we go. When x is 2, right, then I want to use the y value 0 that you get by plugging x equals 0. So, what is this column then? This is actually in the middle x minus 2. So, if I take x equal to 2, and then I subtract 2 to it, I get 0. And if I plug 0 into the function, oh, sorry. If I plug 0 into the, fu if I plug 0 into this function, then I get out a height of 0. So, if I take x equal to 1, 
right? That's this point. Oh, sorry, that's this point. If I take x equals 1, how do I want to function, calculate what x is? Well, x minus 2 is minus 1. And then if I plug that into the function, what do I get? I get out 0. So that means 1 goes to 0. And if I take minus, if I take 0.5, it's 0.5 minus 2. That's minus 1.5. And then we look on the graph, on the black graph, and we get minus 2 for that. So 1 and one point. No, this should be 3 and 3.5. So essentially what we find, if we move the graph to the right, to be able to find various heights, right? So what's y if x is 4, for example? Right? What's this height? Well, I actually want to go two units to the left and calculate the height on the black graph. Right? That'll tell me that I've got 6. Right? Because I'm actually putting 2 into the function. So like that. So subtracting 2 off means to be able to find the y value for the red graph, I look two units to the left to find the height on the uh, black graph, and that tells me what the height is. So to go two units to the right, we subtract two. too far there. Scroll down a little bit to give myself some more room. So move to the right, subtract inside the function. This is an n, not just a little blur. Okay. To move to the left, You add inside the function. So f of x plus 3, it's the same graph of f of x, but move 3 units to the left. It always seems a little backwards to me. Adding should move you to the right, not to the left, but adding moves to the left, subtracting moves you to the right. Okay. Reflection across the x-axis. This is pretty much more straightforward than moving left to right. Flipping it across the x-axis. Um, oops, pens. Need to go back to my black pen. This is my function, y equals f of x. And if I multiply it by minus sign, then I get the red graph, y equals minus f of x. So again, we can go back to our table. x f of x. So suppose we take x equal to um, 1.5. The function is 2, but then if I multiply by a minus sign, that means take the 2 and multiply it by minus. That gives me a minus 2, and that's the minus 2. So if x equals 2, then minus f of x is minus 2. So multiplying by a negative sign just means flip the graph over the x-axis or reflect it over the x-axis. Note, of course, that there are certain numbers that when you multiply by a minus sign don't change. So if x is minus 1, what's f of x? That's 0. What's minus 0? Well, that's still 0. So the places where the graph crosses the x-axis, the x-intercepts, when you multiply by a minus sign, they don't change at all, because you're just flipping it over the x-axis, and the points that are actually on the x-axis don't go anywhere. So, minus sign. Multiplying by a negative sign flips graph over x-axis, also called um, reflecting it over the x-axis. 
depending on what kind of language you use. Okay, and so that's three of our four things. We've moved it up and down. We've moved it left and right. We've flipped it over the x-axis. The last thing to do is to scale a graph. So what's going on here? Well, again, my original graph is in black. My modified graph is in red. And this is y equals 5 times f of x. Okay, so what does multiplying by 5 do to a function? Well, again, we can put up a little table for the black graph. If x is minus 1.5, minus 1, 0, 1, 1.5. If x is minus 1.5, then y is minus 2. If x is minus 1, then y is 0. If x is 0, y is 0. If x is 1, y is 0. If x is 1.5, that's about here, then y is 2. So multiplying by 5 means take the y value, right? calculate f of x first, that's these numbers, and then multiply by 5. And multiplying by 5 just multiplies, you know, doesn't change the sign or anything, just makes that minus 10, makes that 10, 5 times 0, those are all 0. Right? So what happened? Well, these don't move because when you multiply 0 by 5, you just get 0. But, so we take 1.5, multiply that by 2, by 5, you get out to 10, so this is two units, but then if you plug, if you want to know what five times f of x is, you have to go all the way up to ten. Whoop. And so that's ten units. So stretched by a factor of five. Right? If we take 0 0.5, right? this looks like it's maybe, mm, I don't know, a half or something, y equals a half. Multiply by that by 5, you take this distance and you stretch it out by a factor of 5. That brings you up here. Right? And same thing here. This is 2 units, so this is going to be 10 units. Right? If this is 1 unit here, whatever number that is, goes down 1 unit. Then when you multiply by 5, you go down 5 units. So what happens is that you get stretched away from the x-axis when you multiply it by a constant. Um, points that are 0 don't get moved at all because they're on the x-axis. Points that are close to the x-axis get stretched a little bit. Points that are far away from the x-axis, like this one's 2 units, I got stretched way up to 10. So what does multiplying by 5 do? It pulls the graph away from the x-axis by a factor of 5. If we multiply by one fifth, it would pull the graph in towards the x-axis by a factor of a fifth. Okay, so scaling a graph just stretches it away from the x-axis. Great. So let's see how this works with some of our functions. So here's a standard function: um, f of x equals three absolute value of x minus two plus four. That's one of our standard functions. So what is the function that we're dealing with here? Well, y equals absolute value of x. So we started with the function of y of absolute value of x. We turned it into this function. So how has it been moved? So we took this and we changed it to f of x equals 3x minus 2 plus 4. And I think I'd forgotten to box my conclusion in the previous section. So if f of x is multiplied by a number greater than 1, graph is stretched away from the x-axis. If the number you're dealing with is less than 1, then squished 
to the x-axis. Well, have to be a little bit careful here. If you take a number between 0 and 1, then it'll be squished into the x-axis. If you take a number that's negative, it does two things. It flips it, that's what the negative sign does, and then the rest of the number either stretches it away from the x-axis if it's bigger than 1, or it stretches it towards the x-axis if it's between 0 and 1. Okay, so, what's going on here? x minus 2 inside the function, so inside the absolute values, that means you're moving left and right. Negative sign actually means you're moving it right two units. Adding four outside of the whole function, that means you're moving it up or down. In this case, it's a positive four, so it's up four units. Multiplying by three, You're stretching it away from the x-axis by a factor of 3. Right, so that is how it's been moved to get this function. Right 2 units, up 4 units, scaled by a factor of 3. So graph the function y equals f of x. We give ourselves some space here. Draw in the traditional x-axis, the y-axis. What we know, we'll put the original graph of y equals a absolute value x in black. So this is y equals absolute value of x. And we know there are three important points on the graph. Right. 0, 0, minus 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, what does my new graph look like? Well, it has to be moved right two units and up four. So that's going to take the vertex here and move it right two units and up four. So two, four. So this move move up right two, up four. We'll move this out of the way. Okay, so that's the motion. What does the scaling do? Well, scaling moves this over one and up. Uh, the original function goes right one and up one. What's the scaling to do is to take distances and multiply them by a factor here, a factor of three. So for my moved graph, what I want to do is move right from the vertex one and not up one, but up three times one or three units. So six. Let's go back to my red pen. 5, 6, 7. Extend my y-axis out. If I go out to 3, I should go up 3 more units because that's my scale. If I go out to 1, 1 unit left, I should go out 3. So this little triangle right, has now been stretched up by a factor of 3 and then moved over to here. And so there's my new graph y equals 3 x minus 2 plus 4. Great. So moved it right two units, moved it up four units, and then stretched it so that instead of going one unit left and one unit up, I went one unit up left and three units up. And so that's how the scaling works. Okay. And what was the other thing they wanted to know? What's the domain and range of this? Well, here's our function. Domain, no square roots, no logarithms, no fractions. So domain is all reals. What's the range? Well, the range is what are the y's that you can possibly get out of this function? So this is the bottom of the graph. And it's at y equals 4. So the y's you can get out, and we'll put this in, in blue because too many colors going on. Are only y's that are above y equals 4. 
Right? If you pick a particular x value and try and calculate what its y value is, you're going to have to go up to the graph, but the entire graph is higher than y equals 4. So the entire range has to be higher than the bottom of the graph, which is at y equals 4. If you want to do it in interval notation, you can. I generally prefer this because it tells me whether you're talking about the domain of the range. If it's the range, it's a y. If it's the, if it's the domain, it's an x. Right? If you just put in the interval notation, then I really don't know whether you're talking about the domain of the range. Great. So we have identified the standard function as absolute value of x. We identified how it's been moved. Right two units, up four units, and scaled. We graphed it and stated its domain and range. So, section 2.2, problems 37 through 44, sort of like this. So some function, y equals g of x, you got that by taking some other function, f of x. You took the graph of this other function, moved it right two units, reflected it, scaled it by a half, and moved it down four. What's the formula for y equals g of x? Well, g of x is, we started with the function f of x, Left and right, if we remember that, that is inside of the function. Right two units is actually a minus two. Reflecting it across the x-axis would be multiplying by a minus sign. Scaling it, well, that factor you just multiply times the function, so minus one half. And then we moved it down four units. And so that would be subtracting a four. And so. There is the formula for the function y equals g of x. Right 2, scaled by a half, flipped over the x-axis, down 4. So it's, it's like a little game, but it's not too hard to figure out what the rules are once you've played it a couple of times. So here's another example of... Oops, didn't want to do that. Maybe I should have. Um, figure out the formula from pictures, right? Here's a picture of a graph, right? It's a standard function that we've moved around some more. What's the standard function? How has it been moved to get this? Right? What's the formula? I mean, can you figure out what the motions are? And then once you figure out the motions, can you figure out the formula? Like in the previous problem. So what do we have here? It's a function that has an endpoint, and then it goes away from it. So the only function that we have that does this sorts of thing is y equals square root of x. Right? Because if we go all the way back up to the very top. And we're looking at the square root of x function. That's this mess here. Right? It's got zero zeros where it starts and then it arcs out. And so the function that we're dealing with down here at the end of the file, and once I get to it, there we go. Right? It does the same sort of thing. It starts at some point here and then it goes off. But it's moving the wrong way. So what are, what's going on here? Well, how's it been moved to get this function? Well, we know what the graph of y equals square root of x should look like. It should go through the point 1, 1, and square root of 4 is 2, so it should go through that point and that point, and it should start at 0 and work its way up. Right? So that's what y equals square root of x should look like, more or less. Um, so how do we get that one? Well, if we multiply square root of x by minus sign, by minus sign, that'll flip it over the x-axis. And so that'll give us a function that looks somewhat like, uh, let's see, it should go through, when x is 4, it should go through minus 2. And when x is 9, it should go through uh, minus 3. It's over there. So, right. so the fact that this function, which we're interested in, maybe I'll trace it over in a brighter red color. This is the function that we're interested in. The fact that it's opening downward like that means it's probably been flipped. Oh, and once we've seen it's been flipped, we can figure out that it's been moved over right 3, up 2. And is that all that's been done? Well, remember, 
all our functions come with a couple of base points to let us know what's going on. Right? For the square root function, one unit right, one unit up. This function here, right, it's starting at three. If we go one unit right, we go down two units. So it's been scaled. Great. So we figured out what's going on with this function. Scaled by 2 and flipped, so that means we multiply by minus 2. Moved right 3, that means we have to subtract a 3 inside the function, and then up 2 units. So that's the equation of this red graph. What's the domain? Well, the domain for a function is all the x's above or below the graph. The graph starts at x equals 3, so the domain is x greater than 3. If you take an x less than 3, you'll never hit the graph going left or right. If you take an x greater than 3, you'll hit the graph sooner or later. Ugh. My computer is going nuts. Okay, what's the range? Pens. Pen. Range. What's the range for this thing? There we go. Well, domain is all the x's all the points on the x-axis that are above or below the graph. The range is all the points on the y-axis that are to the left, in this case, of the graph. So the range then, here's the top of the graph, any y-value less than 2, right, that lies to the left of the graph. Any y-value bigger than 2, like y equals 4, well there's no graph for it here. So the top of the graph is at y equals 2, so the range is going to be y less than or equal to 2. And of course, you can always do this in interval notation. Since it's a greater than or equal, we want to actually have a bracket. And here it's minus infinity Ugh. to 2. So y less than or equal to 2. So this is why I don't like um, interval notation when dealing with functions. Here's one interval, here's another interval, but there's no way to tell whether which one's the domain of the range. I like x squared equal to 3 because it tells me it's the domain, that's x's. I like y less than equal to 2 because it tells me you know it's the range because you told me that it's y. Okay. So, here is another standard function that's been moved. Same problems. How has it been moved? What's the formula? What's the domain in the range? This is y equals x squared. Okay, it is opening up, so it's not been flipped. It is been moved. We know for y equals x squared would start with the vertex at zero. And the vertex has gone one unit left and four units down. And if we look at the standard points, right, if we start at the vertex and we go one unit, and be careful about your units here, right? This is minus one, that's zero, so one unit is this far. How far up do we have to go to get to the graph again? So up two. So it's been scaled by two. So what's our function then? Scaled by two, one unit left, that's actually a plus one inside the parentheses and then four units down, that's a minus four. So domain and range. Domain is all x because it's not a fraction. We don't have to worry about the denominator. It's not a square root, it's not a logarithm. Those are the only special cases. Those are the only functions that we deal with whose domain is not all x. So the domain here is all x. What's the range? Well, again, the bottom of the graph here is minus four. Right? And so y values greater than the bottom of the graph is what the range is. Or you could say that's minus 4 to infinity, although I wouldn't. 
So we can find the bottom of the graph, and the range is everything above that. Great. And that's pretty much it for moving around, right? Left and right, that's inside the function. Up and down, outside the function. Scaling is a multiple in front. If the multiple in front is minus, then it's been flipped. You can figure out the range. Well, you know, the squared function is the only one that actually got a complicated range. If this is your graph, well, maybe I'll just draw a new picture. How do you find the domain and range from a graph? If that's your graph, right, and this is, say, 10, and this is 2, and this is, say, minus 5, and this is, say, 15, just making all that up. Well, your domain is how far it goes left to right. So for this particular function, minus 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 15. Your range is how far it goes up and down. And so here it would be, oops, a little too far from my range. Um, 2 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 10. So you can find the bottom and the top of the graph. That'll tell you about the range, the leftmost point, and the rightmost point. That'll tell you about the domain. For most of the graphs, they go all the way out to minus infinity to infinity, so the domain is all reals. Many of our graphs, in fact, square roots, absolute value, and um, square roots, absolute value, and squaring functions, the range is limited on one side. There's a bottom or a top to the graph, and so the range will be y is less than equal to something, or y is greater than equal to something. So...